Yes, sir. Mark, um, how has the team responded this week in practice? They've responded well. Um, uh, you know, I think in, in the locker room, um, uh, like the look in their eye and just of, of, you know, combination of missed opportunity and looking ahead um, and saying a lot of good things to each other, um, taking responsibility, encouragement, whatever, you know, whatever the, the, the various emotions were at that time. Uh, and, they've, and they've worked well this week. Third week in a row, it looks like you're playing another really good quarterback in, in Arbuckle. What have you seen out of him, and what does he do well? They they really spread it around. He they do they do a nice job. We're we're kind of similar similar to them offensively and defensively, um, um, schematically. Um, you know, a little bit more pass oriented than than we are. And the, obviously, the, the the freshman receiver had a, has had a couple unbelievable games. Um, and they did just do a great job making plays on the ball. Had you know had a, had some tough turnovers. Uh, had a great win last week on the on the road and finally kind of broke through. Um, and then just a bunch of athletic guys that they, they get in space with enough run mix to, to make the play action work. Coach, clearly no one wants to lose a game, but several players have said that they felt the way the game went in terms of you guys fighting back on the road against a good team like that has really brought maybe the team closer together. Have you noticed that at all? I think so. You know, it was, um, I thought at time, you know, a time, time when I was looking at a bunch of eyeballs was after that first drive the very first drive for, for our defense because everybody's, you know, hammering them last week and, and the first drive, you know, we're, 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 we're in the wrong gap and they spray out a, a big run, miss a tackle, it, it becomes bigger. They score on a play action and it's just bang, bang. That, that's a time where, you know, usually there's some, some uncertainty, some, some finger pointing, some what, whatever it may have, you know, elicited and there was none. There was accountability. There was, you know, uh, immediate recognition of what happened, and they kept playing. You know, played probably their best football in the, you know, they had the ball a ton in the third quarter and, and building into the fourth quarter, and and that that will pay off. You know, and and it's it's one of those things, and and uh, you know, we talk all the time about a sense of urgency, sense of urgency, sense of urgency, but sometimes it takes a, you know, true punch in the gut to. Okay, that, that that third play of practice that really matters, or hey, that seventeenth you know seventeenth play of the you know drill really matters, and and so uh, it can't do anything but but help us, and we won't we won't let it not. Any more questions? <coughs> Are you uh, preparing both of Vernon and Jeff to maybe be the starter this week, just in case? Um, we're preparing very similar how we have uh, all those guys are you know taking taking reps and and out there um and we'll see how how it all shakes out we know you don't talk about injuries but players and some coaches but, have acknowledged that there is an injury on a certain hand of a quarterback but what people are saying is that the toughness he's shown and the resiliency and the accountability even in the face of his own injury has really helped embrace him and ingratiate him with his team and, and that, that he is truly a duck. It doesn't matter. He's been here four weeks. Do you get a sense that he's really demonstrated to this team that he's one of them and not just a gun for hire, so to speak? Oh, definitely. Definitely. And I think that started, uh, I think I, I said on, on day one, you know, he wanted to step in front of the team and make this big talk and apologize for being a distraction, all this stuff. And, and I'd say, don't, don't talk, just do. And, and he, he has worked ever since then. And that, that really, uh, ingratiated his, you know, into everyone it is, is just how hard he worked. Um, and certainly, yeah, taking accountability for, for things that may or may not be your fault or certain situations, you know, things that are out of, out of your control. Absolutely. And that's, that's the sign of, of, you know, a good leader. And then, you know, hopefully all the, the, the followers do the exact same thing, you know, in terms of taking accountability, looking at, you know, looking at, looking at themselves and what could I have done? What will I do? All those things going forward. But a brief right inside. Vernon said he felt a little uptight and that he wasn't really having that much fun on Saturday. Did you <laughs> see that? And do you think he can loosen up a little bit? <laughs> um, man, that's a, I don't. I, that's one of those things of of uh, you know just being around him more and the the chemistry of of him and his teammates or or getting to know him a little bit. Um, you, you know, 
there's you're, that's something you're always finding out about your your team and your individual players is who who needs that look in their eye of kind of the, the high anxiety you know some guys play better in in that mindset some guys need to be completely loose most people are somewhere on that that spectrum um but you know i don't, I don't think you know i'm sure the 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 crowd and the defense and and everything else contributed to a little bit of the uh anxiety but i don't think he played uptight Coach, I'm going to take you kind of in a different direction. Talk about the guys that don't get to be there on Saturday for the most part, your scout team. Um, are they giving you the kind of looks, your offense and defense, the kind of looks you need to prepare for each of the games you've had? Do you like what they're doing? Uh, yes and no. Uh, our scout offense today was awesome. They were outstanding. Uh they, they, you know, are getting to the tempo and some of the physicality that you want to, to get to at this point. Um, uh, you know, you can't simulate – some Michigan State's guys with your scout team and it's just physically impossible we don't have those guys uh, around here just on the shelf um, and you're, you're constantly working different different things from from an offensive standpoint a defensive standpoint a special team standpoint there's some things that, that Georgia State does that are are unique in special teams and those are hard to create in in you know in an instant because you're you're breaking habits that you've instilled in them for for months or years or whatever um, but for the most part those guys are working their tails off they're making you know honest mistakes when they when they do and that is it invaluable part of, of building confidence in every phase leading up to the game can't you can't be successful without great scout teams cannot you guys haven't generated a ton of pressure on defense on quarterbacks but then again you face quarterbacks that got rid of the ball really quickly and on time are you is that i mean do you sort of put it on the fact that the quarterbacks have been pretty good at that or do you wish you were getting more pressure and there are a lot of things you can work on to increase it both it's absolutely both. You know, I mean, uh, there's there's some times when, when we're in two-gap mode up front and not transitioning to pass rush quickly enough or, or well enough. Uh, part of that, you know, is credit to them. Part of that is, is stuff that we can work on. Um, in our four-man pressures last week, we did a decent job of, of you know, making making Connor Cook move his feet. There's a bunch of stuff in, in, our, in our stunts and our line games that, that we can technically – clean up and and our guys have have worked to that end and then you know there's always things from a schematic standpoint that you're you're going back and forth on uh whether it's pressure over coverage or or you know types of pressures all all those things do you remember how ugo amadi got in touch with you guys to want to play for you guys um i don't remember exactly i just remember john neal coming down the hall all excited which is you know <laughs> like a t tuesday i mean uh and uh yeah i can't remember exactly the, the the how it how it all transpired but but um obviously when he when he decommitted and and had called us and the, the timing was was perfect from a from an academic standpoint and all those all those things uh that it that it worked out was there any hesitancy of taking a guy who hadn't even visited. I mean, I, don't, I can't remember if I've ever seen that before of a guy committing without and then signing and enrolling early without ever seeing the campus. Right. It was it was a situation, and again, I'm forgetting the exact intricacies of it. But but uh, there was there were a couple of relationships that that we knew um, in his kind of camp um, and and at his school where there that that trust factor was built up, uh, and you know we had we. Had, recruited him up until he, he had committed elsewhere. So there was a, there was a relationship. Yeah. What's the takeaway from Marcus Mariota's game? Did you watch it? <laughs> I didn't get to see all of it. I, I, uh, I recorded it um, some point in the far distant future. I'll try to try to watch it. But no, that was, I mean, awesome. And, you know, I was joking the other day, not surprising, but uh, it, it, it is and it isn't, you know, to, to go to that level and play that efficiently. Uh, I've seen that, you know, seen that before, but to, to do that at that level against that, that uh, type of competition is extremely impressive. There was that Wall Street Journal article that said NFL quarterbacks are or coaches are kind of concerned about spread option quarterbacks coming into the NFL and how ready they are. And I think the Titans have talked a lot about how prepared Marcus has been. But what have you guys done to help your quarterbacks get ready for that next level? Our quarterbacks, our, our quarterbacks are quarterbacks. They're not spread quarterbacks. They need to know defense. They need to know 
pressures. They need to know why things occur. It's not throw it over here to this guy or look at this guy and then run. That we don't do that. Um, and that's that was always the you know the bug that everybody said. And I just said, hey, talk to him, ask him something and you'll like the answer and to a person when they came back it was like okay i got it you know and, and they're used to talking to some of these other guys in these other systems that, that they don't ask them to do anything and that's not that's not what we do and again that's that's unique to marcus and unique to you know there's each each person that comes out is different it's not this type of you know name a coach quarterback uh, type of deal I, I know it wasn't perfect, but considering the quarterback you were facing and the team you were facing, were you pleased with the growth of the secondary last week from week one? Yeah, yes and no. You know, you're always you're always trying to to, to chase better. There are some things that they you know could have fit run a little bit better. Just ran to the ball again a little bit better. Had you know a miscommunication for a touchdown that that can't tell you how many times we practice that route it's like one of their you know base base concepts and and you know to get beat at all let alone for a touchdown on that type of thing those are the things that you just you you, you it's hard hard for those things to it's hard to, to swallow those things i'm breaking many of my rules here I, I said we can't talk about this anymore uh but um uh for the mo you know they played better but you know there's there's more more to it than that <laughs> okay. he, he's Mark and Tardy. Mark and Tardy. Thank you. Thanks.